So if we have a small control volume here, and we want to calculate the, 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 the rate of flux in the system, then we can use Fick's law of diffusion, or if we know the densities and the velocities, we can calculate it directly. So if I just put this up here, this, the molar flux here, so I'm, this is in kilomole per uh, square meter per second, this flux is equal to the, the molar density, so kilomole per cubic meter multiplied by the velocity, make this a big V, the velocity of species I, and this is the density of species I as well, and obviously this is meters per second. And this is applicable in uh, if, if this is in a stationary state. So this is for a stationary state. But let's say that perhaps the state is not stationary. So if I bring up here, we have the, our green box, but if I bring up this yellow box, so let's say that this, this green box is situated here in this, this yellow region here, and that perhaps there is some, some advective flow of some sort in this direction. So let's just draw this here. So we have our diffusion, but at the same time, we also have um, this sort of uh, advective flow also carrying molecules inside the system. And I just want to, I just realized I missed the I here. So this is obviously the flux, the, the diffusive flux of species I. But let's try and incorporate this extra flux as well. Well, if we want to calculate the diffusive flux um, given this extra velocity, uh, of the system, then we can do that, but then we have to subtract that out. So the diffusive flux of, of species I is still the, the density, but then this velocity, this is the velocity of species I minus the velocity of the system. And obviously, if the velocity of the system is zero, then we recover our initial stationary state. Um, and this is obviously in, in kilomole in, in terms of molar mass, uh, sorry, in terms of molar density, but we can do the same just for completeness. I'll write this also for uh, mass density as well. So this is the, the, the mass density and then the velocity, the mass velocity. So I'm using a small v here. These are big v's. This is a small v minus the mass velocity of, of the system. So we can calculate the diffusive flux, um, even if there is some sort of net velocity to the molecules in the system, as long as we know, of course, what that velocity is. Um, but let's say for a moment we don't really care if we have a, some sort of molecule here and it's moving at, at some sort of rate in this direction, maybe. Um, and for, a moment we, for the moment, we don't really care why it's moving, whether it's due to diffusion or whether it's due to some sort of advective process or whatever. If we just think about the, the flux of this molecule, we can define the absolute flux. So I'll write this out here, the absolute flux um, of, let's actually, I'm gonna, let's work in terms of moles. So let's call this the absolute molar flux. Um, of, uh, say, this is species I, so this is of species I. And I'm going to denote this by um, n dot. So this is um, the, the absolute molar flux of species I. And whatever its origins, this is this can be calculated in, in the similar fashion to the, to the uh, diffusive uh, flux up here as simply the, the density of species I, the molar density, multiplied by the velocity. And this is, again, a big V um, of species I. So whatever the origins of the movement are, um, 
th this is the absolute molar flux of the species. Now, we defined the uh, diffusive flux up there. So I'm going to expand that out here. So Ji um, is equal to this uh, the molar density multiplied by the um, species velocity. This is a V. Um, minus the molar density of species i multiplied by the system the, the, the system velocity v. And I can substitute in here um, ni into this, so then this is the simply the absolute molar flux of species i oops, we got the dot, minus um, ci times the system uh, velocity v. And then rearranging for Ni, let's put this over here, so then Ni, so this absolute molar flux of species I is then equal to this diffusive flux J plus some sort of uh, ex external, uh, external flux or uh, advective con contribution um, to, to the flux. So we have these, these then these two different contributions to the net, the absolute molar flux of species I. Now we can take this one step further because we know that the mole fraction is given by the, the molar density of species I over the molar density of the system, um, or in other words, that Ci, so the molar density of species I, is the um, is, is the molar density of the system multiplied by the how much of species I is this uh, by how much of, of the system is species I um, and so again we can let's write this out over here again we can write that this absolute molar flux of species I is equal to the diffusive contribution so the diffusive flux plus and then I'm just going to substitute this in here. Uh, so where are we? Let's see. So this is then x. Let's put xi first. So this is xi. So the, the mole fraction of species i multiplied by the molar density of species i multiplied by the velocity um, of the system. And actually, no, this is, this is of course, this isn't ci. This is just c. Now, I, I mentioned at the beginning here that this Ni here, this the the absolute molar flux of species I is equal to the, the molar density of species I multiplied by its velocity. And we can do the same, we can define actually let's do this in orange as well. We can define the the system, the, the absolute molar flux of the system as being the, the same sort of thing, this, the, the, the molar density of the system multiplied by its velocity. So uh, this is the molar, absolute molar flux of the system, giving us a, a final expression here that the absolute molar flux of species I is equal to this diffusive contribution uh, Ji plus the molar fraction of species I multiplied by the absolute molar flux of the system. And I'm going to underline this because I think this is quite a nice little result. What this tells us is that um, if we want to know what the, the, you know, what the flux of, of species I in the system is, um, we, we can calculate this partially uh, well, from, from knowing the two contributions. Um, one partial contribution from the diffusion due to the concentration gradient, but an additional contribution due to the, um, the, the any, some advective flow, for example, of the system as a whole. And we can calculate what that is if we know how much of species I is in the system and, and we know what the, the flux of the system as as a whole is, and these are quantities which tend to be relatively easy to measure 
um, especially compared to some of these other quantities that I used whilst I was deriving this.